October 29th, and it is 11, 11 a.m. at the Golden Court Community Room. Agenda topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in the advance of the meeting. Pamela, do you have anything? That the meeting has nothing. Wonderful. I do uh, uh, Sue? I wanted to know, since last meeting we... Um, this is strictly about topics for the agenda. That's all. Topics to add to the agenda because they weren't reasonably anticipated. Right. But this has to do with last agenda. Well, so it has to do with an agenda. Right. Did you? Well, was there something you wanted to add to this agenda? No, I wanted to. Okay, I, then. That's this is not the place. But we do have a place later for you. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything? Good. I have nothing. Rich nothing. and Pamela has nothing. So now we're down to approval of the minutes. Uh, the minutes of Sept uh, Tuesday, September tw uh, 24th, 2024. Uh, I will start with Sue. Sue, do you have anything for the, uh, uh, any additions, corrections, or deletions? And it has to be limited to that. Of the minutes of September 24th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have anything? Oh, yeah. So I was looking over the minutes and... For my information at the bottom, mm -hmm. it says, "Could I say something?" I think Sue, as Pamela stated, we should we just started, so if we didn't have concern. I would have waited for the whole meeting just to see if it would have been announced and see if that information would have been included. And then you can bring I it up. Oh, okay. So uh, the uh, we should delete the lowercase I, right? Uh, a second line from the bottom. Good catch. Anything else? Um, and it says I stated mention is a little um before the horse. It, and you said it's a little cart before the horse, right? right. So, okay. So instead of the um, let's put cart. Is that okay, Pam Creek? Yeah. Mention okay. is the cart before the horse. Yes. It is the cart, not a little um. Uh, it is the cart before the horse. Right. Good catch. Anything else? I believe that is. The family is offline. Um, so on the second page, my first comment. So uh, give, give me a, a page. Uh, where in the page? Excuse me, third page. Okay. First comment for me. Okay, can you tell us about where it is on it's, the page? It's about the first comment. So when you look at the page, you'll see my name. Okay, so about a third way down, Pam. Oh, for her. Yeah. So you meant for us. Okay. No. You, it's okay, important so, for you to so tell. So on me. the third page at the top, right in that paragraph, you'll see my name. Are you right there? Thank you. Oh, did you find it? Mm -hmm. It's about a third of the way down. Yeah. yeah. So basically, that would be just two because the other three are offline. The family is offline. So two are the ones that are going to get redesigned. We have someone for those. So what does this mean? The family is offline. Family unit. But I don't think I said the family is offline. So, so what she does is she she listens to the video and it's a transcript of what's right. said. Right. Yeah. So right. it's. So you will probably in the moment say the family, the, being the family unit is offline. Right, that's right. what I'm saying. So but probably, but he, so it's okay if a few words are omitted. Is well, that she's what not saying. Well, she didn't omit them if they weren't. It, it wasn't said. It's implied I because we were in the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It so. sounds kind of weird. The family is offline. Well, the family unit, those yeah. family units. So are that's why sometimes a word or two will get that's missed because thinking. people start talking over oh, each yeah. other, right. and it's very hard after like the fourth, fifth time. That's why I said so if it's a few words, it's them. fine as long as we understand and it's it's videotaped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, then you know what? If that's the case, then I won't even nitpick the rest of them because if there's going to be some type of misunderstanding with the with the, the word placement. I don't want to keep the meeting up. I can always. No, if if something that is written in the minutes would 
uh, create an issue later on for someone reading the, the minutes, not being able to understand. But for instance, it is a transcript of what's on videotape. And like Pam said, sometimes you can't catch the, uh, right, because that's people, what you said. Yeah, that's why I said it's okay. Because, and I'm explaining to you why it's important to correct the minutes. Okay. So, uh, it is important to correct the minutes. Mm -hmm. If, if we want to, you know, we could put a parens, so instead of the family is, we could put, uh, we could put the family parens unit, paren, into parens, is offline to help the context. We could do that because it probably is a talk over. I would not. You would not? No, because it is, it, this is a transcript. Thank you. Okay. So, it's a, so I'm going to have to watch my verbiage because I see here, I, I said, yeah, I don't dare this add is, anything. So it, right. um, but the, the type of minutes that we have are, for this housing authority, are transcripts. Right, right. So I, it's, if you read the whole context, the whole, the, all of it, you it, get the context. Right, of that's why I said a few words is fine, because then I'm reading here, so I see you working hard, so hard, behind closed doors, to not have to go through the process of evicting someone, because you do understand. You know housing is limited, and you try to help everyone, but sometimes you do have to go a different route, and lots of times it's heartbreaking. But it is a job you have to fulfill. Uh -huh. So that sounds like I would say it's just quotations are off, but I'm not yeah. in that particular. Do you have any? So you know, I would just leave the rest because again, it's not too much to so yeah. a word here, a word there, no, no, no. and I would just move on. Do you have anything else? I would just move on. No. Okay. So uh, page page seven, I've already talked to uh, Pam Creek about page seven. Uh, it should be rusting instead of busting. The, We're at page seven. The second line from the top, as I was just getting ready to say. Okay. Uh, and then on page nine, Wait, a li excuse me. What, what is the correction? Because I'm on page seven now. Rusting oh, instead of busting. busting. Okay. So page nine, a little more than halfway down, uh, it says. I said they're doing management agreements, regionalization, and also it should be contracting instead of contacting. Just a clarification, and, and Pam already knows. And then um, on the very last page, page 12, down at the I'm still looking for what you said. You said, yeah. you said down at the bottom should be contracting. No, I said a little more than halfway down. Right. It should be contracting. Oh, where it says aid. mutual aid, so it sh it's not yeah. contacting. Yeah. Okay. It's contracting. And there's not one reading through this. Anything I said, there's not one complete sentence. I know when I talk, I, I talk most of the time complete okay. sentence. Okay, so I'm going to suggest for <laughs> those of you who who believe you said something that's not it's always. I mean, I'm, there's hardly any transcript. I'm going to ask you not to interrupt right. me. So when you're going through these minutes and you see something that your memory is different than what is written on the minutes, please go through the videotape, find the exact um, uh, minute mark, and then send Pam an email. Or at least tell us during this meeting about the correction no, of the minutes. No, no. If you, no. because otherwise, Pam is not gonna, nobody's gonna have Pam go through the entire videotape to find out, it's just not gonna happen. So, if you could do that, if you have a problem with the minutes, then look at the, at the video, get the minute mark the, at the start and at the end of your corrections so that we can correct these, okay? Uh, so on page 12, under public comments, where it says no one from the public attended the meeting, uh, Maggie Aldrich McCassie attended the meeting. She left before the public comment se uh, session. It, it's a tenant. You, it's it's out. She's on the front. The front, front. She's on the front. She is on the front. Yes, okay. then she attended. Yeah. Thank you. It does say she attended. It's just yeah. a, she had left a small correction. 
Rich, do you have anything? All set. I'm good. You're good? Yep. Pamela, was there anything you found? No. Okay, so I will ask again. Sue, do you have anything? Nothing for now. Crystal? I have nothing. Rich? Have nothing. nothing. Uh, then I will call for the vote. Or call for a motion. Do I have a move? Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. Uh, okay. As amended. Uh, as amended. As amended. As amended, yes. Okay. And you second the as amended? Okay. Rich uh, makes a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Crystal seconds. A call for the vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. I'm a yes. Rich? Yes. There we go. Okay, moving on uh, for the executive director report. Would you like to give the entirety of this executive sure. director yes, report? Please. Yep, so the warrant report, we have uh, invoices that were paid each, um, on 9-19, totaling $22,335.11. Can I get a, a motion to approve? Yes. I'll make the motion. Okay. Okay. Rich makes the motion to approve the warrant report of 919-2024 to 919-24 in the amount of $22,335.11. Crystal Jackson seconds. Any discussion? Sue? No, nothing. Crystal? No. I have nothing. I Rich? Have nothing. nothing. Uh, call for the vote? Yes. Yes. Sue is a yes. Crystal's a yes, I'm yes. a yes, Rich is a yes. <coughs> yep, it's unanimous, score is zero. Stop it. Okay, so um, and <coughs> moving on to the treasurer's report. Thank you. Um, so this is for a uh, period ending September 30th, 2024. So everything is is in order. I did talk to Gary DePace about um, adding, encumbering the overage that we had in the maintenance areas, maintenance uh, and, there's the other one, I apologize. Okay, so that's in the budget. Yeah, it's in the budget. There's $23,875 that we had left over. Um, and that's just, be, it came in late with that budget mm -hmm. exemption or re revision that we had asked for. On the first page, Sue, on the 400-1, if you go down to the bottom, um, it says the over-under for $23,872,000 over. Can you or point or that under. out? Show us. Right, all the way to, to the very last figure. Okay. So we're page looking two. at... Page two? Yep. Yeah, oh, page, page two. two. Yep. So that's being um, encumbered over our unit turnovers. I need more page two. I was looking at right. one. That's encumbered for unit makeovers, correct? Uh, turnovers. Yep. Turnovers, yeah. And shouldn't it say unit turnover other than just uh, no, because that's under? No, because this is your, your income and expense report, so it's on there. But, so if you look up and through, there's, there's leftover money in many of the line items. Yes. But no. when you say leftover, because this is this is for the period ending 9-30-24, right. which is your last. Yeah. Because you wear it October 1st. So right. the amount where it says amount slash um, over and under, is that the leftover? Or mm -hmm. Okay. That's the total amount. Okay. So the first line is the total with all of the rest of the lines and figured. Yeah, that's our, that, so our budget in A and, A and U E L. It's not uh, prorated if we were in the middle of a a, unit, a year, but we're at the end of the year in this one, and then the annual expenses to date. So we spent two hundred and seventy six four hundred one mm -hmm. for the annual, and then which is under um, what you would give what we budgeted. Right. Okay. So we're okay. saving that money for unit turnovers this coming year. So the 23,872 is going to be used for the unit turnover. Yes. Do you know when that's going to be applied? 
but it's going to start being applied mm -hmm. to the turnover as far as, what is it turnover? Is it maintenance? Is it? It's, it's maintenance and contract costs. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it went from, it, it ended 9-30-24. When did it begin? You said it October ended. October 1st. October 1st, okay. Of 23. Mm -hmm. But remember, this is the treasurer's report for September. September 1st to September 30th. But of course, you're going to see stuff from the, the year-long budget, I think is what. This isn't just from one month. This right. Is what's left after so you have the year-end and the quarter. Yeah. Because the mm -hmm. quarterly is your year-end report. Yeah. And is that, that wage match going in with the year-end, or is it going in with the new budget? Okay, so that should be included with this packet then. So we'll bring, if you can bring that over. <coughs> Sorry, I made a mistake with that. which is so we're at the last fourth quarter, but it's also the year end too. So uh, hold on, are we done with the actual Unless treasurer's report? Anyone has any, any questions? We're done with the treasurer's report, report for September 30th. Does anyone have any more questions about that? Yeah. Sue, Crystal, Rich? No. no. I just have one. Is there anything in the um, mod cost? on the third page that we need to review? No, you'll be reading the mod okay. report in here. You betcha. Okay, so now uh, we're to the quarterly year, year end, Pamela? Yep. Okay. So this one we will need a vote, and, and it gives you much more detail about the different lines. It's really thick. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> so we do have um, all of you, your, op, your quarterly operating statement, your balance sheet, the AUEL, which is your allowable non-utility expense levels. And this is from 10-1-23? No, this is, um, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. To the end of our fiscal year, yeah. of September 3rd. 23 to 9-30-24. So we will be uh, signing, the, the documents that must be signed are the fiscal year end certification that's signed by the ED. Do we need to vote on that? Yes, you're going to vote okay. on it. And, the, and then you'll, you'll sign it once we vote on it, correct? Right. And then the certification of compliance for lead, uh, and that's federal and state requirements. So. Uh, we the whole entire board signs that certification. That's correct. And the uh, certification of God, I use my uh, We don't need to. I have oh the certification of the top five salaries, but we don't have any employees, correct? Right. But you're still signing that. We still sign so, yeah. um, And number four is the year-end financial with the tenant's account receivable, and the whole board signs that as well. So, want to explain all this to us, Pamela? Yep. And the wage match. You're going to be signing wage oh, match. Oh, and as wage well. match. Now, wage match is an addition to our it's new agenda. Day. Uh, well, it's part of the year at it, year It's, part, it's of year part of the financial, financial statement. Okay. So this is, uh, it, we do wage match uh, with all of our tenants and applicants, mm -hmm. and that is where the Social Security number is run through uh, a system that is works with the Department of Revenue, mm -hmm. and it can capture income. Mm -hmm. So we verify income. Okay, great. So uh, we'll put that down 
just to make sure. But you're going to explain all that to us when it gets to be time, right? Um, right, so, um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions on the... Uh, hey. Is there a wage match form? Salary recommendations that you cannot go above, and they have that whole complicated form. So there's a cap you cannot go above. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So my question would be: um, Can we vote on this as the motion? My understanding of the motion, as everything that's in our quarterly year end report, including wage match, as one vote, or do we need to take them separately? I would take them separately. You, okay. do, you do have two motions already on, on 
Well, we have a, a motion to approve the quarterly year and report, mm -hmm. which are you saying needs to be separate from the voting on the wage match and everything else that follows? Does it, yes. Yep. So you have that one and the wage match. So if you if you vote on those two, then this form covers that you're going to be signing covers both of those votes. Okay. So I'm going to repeat the motion because I have no memory of voting for wage match or the. Um, I'm sorry, not wage match, top five. The top five. Yep. I just had a motion for the financial okay. aspect of the year end report. So that you So let's first vote on the quarterly year end report, mm -hmm. the financial portion. Yep. Which we already have a motion in a second. So I'll call for the vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? I'm yes. Rich? Yes. yes. All right. Four to zero. Moving on to the a uh, fiscal year end uh, for the top five salaries and are you saying also the wage match, right? No, I would do the, just the top salaries. Right? Okay, so we'll, uh, can I get a motion for the top five salaries for Hadley Housing Authority? Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion. Rich makes the motion. Can I get a second? And we have to sign all this too. Yeah. Can I get a second? Second. So Sue seconds. Uh, I'll call for discussion. Sue? Nothing. Crystal? No. I have yeah, nothing. Sure. Rich, do you have any questions about the top five? No. Salaries? I have nothing. I will call for the vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. I'm a yes. Rich? Yes. It passes for zero. And which do you want to take next? I'd yeah. really like you to sign the papers because we oh. have such a hard time keeping signatures. <laughs> you betcha. And submitting those. So. Oh, well, she can sign it. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you're all oh, going to no, sign. You're all going to sign. This is the top. And then put your name in soup and Reese has to sign. Do we have to no. Oh, no, no, no. We're not signing people's board packet papers. I need you to sign. Oh, you tell her to sign. This is, this is the, I'm not saying you did. This oh. is um, the document that we need to sign for the top five. Okay, so you don't sign this thing? No. Oh. It's she has a special one for us to sign, oh. not the Yeah, that we have to upload. Package. I didn't know that. Oh, no, that's okay. right. procedures for federal and state-led paint laws. Uh, would someone like to make the motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. And then you have to read, it, there's a motion uh, with language to, to say. Certification of I think you have to read this. You have to, he has to read this whole thing, right? Yeah. All right, number one, environmental yeah, no, protection just, agency. Oh, we're not we the undersigned. What or that? no, you don't have to do that. Okay. What down here? Yeah, Where just read. Going? You make a motion to approve the certification of compliance for one, two, three, and four. All right, number one, environmental protection agency regulations, 40 CFR. 745 subpart F disclosure of known lead based paint and or lead based paint hazard upon sale or lease of residential property. Number two, 
Massachusetts Department of Public Health lead poisoning prevention and control regulations at 105 CMR 460 725. Number three, EPA regulations at 40 CFR 745 subpart D residential property renovation and and number four, Massachusetts Division of Occupational Safety, Deleting and uh, Lead Safe Renovation Regulations at 454 CMR 22.00. And that's a Hadley Housing Authority. And that the Hadley Housing Authority is maintaining proper record keeping related to such requirements. Can I get a second? I don't have that information in my calendar. It is. Uh, from the main packet that looks like this mm -hmm. on the front, mm -hmm. it is the second from the back. Uh, can I get a second? I need to read. This year it's part of the AUP, so it's part of our audit that you're certifying. Them. So you've never, it's never been part of your audit? Not, not AUP. Okay. Excuse me, not wage match. Oh, no. really? So yeah. when do you do it? At the time of when they get the uh, audit? 
No, so we do it for all applicants right. to verify income, and then throughout the year we're pulling it constantly to monitor income. Right. But then also what's probably when re rent redetermination happens. No, because you were asking if it was new. No, I didn't mean new. I mean new to here, new oh. to Amherst Housing, not new to the state. Oh, what's new is that this certification is yeah. to audit. Oh, when they audit individual files, they've always checked to make sure we were doing it. Oh. But now it's that the board is certifying it. Okay, that's the new piece of it. As what, what happens frequently, you know, as what happens frequently, the state has new requirements all the time right. that come through on the PHNs. And now this is a new requirement that the board states. Yes. Okay. So can I get a motion, please? And how would you like that motion stated, Pamela? Aha! There you go. Uh, who would like to make a motion? And then you get to read this then. Nobody jumps up. Rich, you're you're very reliable. Go ahead. Teach uh, you to get a haircut. <laughs> MT, MD. <laughs> uh, Executive Director of Board Approval. Your signature below indicates that you have read and thoroughly understand the conduct of public housing notice 2023-03 and 2019-16. It indicates that all authorized employees at your housing authority have met and signed. Number one, wage match acknowledgement regarding confidentiality of information. Number two, door disclosure and security training and safeguarding information. And number three, your authority has been signed and acknowledgement on file for fiscal year. 2024. All right. Can I get a second? Second. Crystal Jackson seconds. Rich's motion. So any further discussion? Sue? No more discussion. Crystal? No. I have nothing. Rich? No. Nothing. I will call for the vote. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Yes. I'm a yes. Rich? Yes. yes. So moved. Four to zero. And now we can do <coughs> just your oh, signature. Just my signature. And I should sign it as of today, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Please. There you go, ma'am. Where's your little binder with all the sign forms in them? We don't want to sit on my desk. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda agenda is the uh, unit vacancy report, Pamela. So, um, as of should be ten one, but we Golden Court has six vacancies. Berkeley has the two remaining ones. Uh, we do have two tenants moving in, so that'll drop it. And work has begun finally on the two units that are becoming more ADA. Yeah. So, unfortunately, nothing. No. You know, it's okay news, not not great. Um, and then under tenant, oh, I'm sorry, does anybody have anything on vacancies? I do, uh, but Sue, do you have any questions about vacancies? No. Crystal? No. Uh, it should be loose, stapled, and it came immediately after that big packet for the year end. You got it? Yeah. Okay. So my question is, I, I remember that the state was allowing us not to uh, say uh, some vacancies are taken off line, they don't count, but we've got a, a vacancy percent of seven, I'm sorry, of, I, I'm not sure here, but we've got uh, two, or I'm sorry, six vacant units how much of them count against us or, you know, because of this a vacancy initiative, I thought we could take those two or four units offline. Well, they're not taking them out of the vacancy report. We're not oh, okay. being um, penalized for any of the vacancies. We have waivers for all of them. You have waivers for all the vacancies, yeah. so we're not being penalized. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Rich, do you have any questions? No, I have. Okay. Uh, it's a non-votable item. So, Pamela, the next one is a tenants account receivable. Yep, tenants account receivable. So we do have um, pretty good tar balances still here. 
Um, I was in court yesterday. Um, so we did. Uh, so earlier, I'm sorry. Earlier in the month, we unfortunately had a um, eviction, a physical eviction that took place. So we will be under that 667, that tar balance. Um, a good portion of that will be. I'll be bringing to the board next month to write off. Um, I don't see us being able to recoup that, unfortunately. Um, but that that one was a was a process. Tried everything we could. It just did. That went work. on for a couple of years. It did. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. years. Yep. So this amount for the total is going to change. Yes. Yeah. It's. Um, but it is a loss to the housing authority. Yeah. And then I did have um, a mediated agreement yesterday that hopefully will be signed, which is uh, preserving the tenancy and putting it into a repayment agreement. Okay. So that's a good one. And then the repayment agreements are coming along. Um, people are making their payments, so okay. it's it's working. So that's all. <gasps> and that so is the elderly, correct? Six, six, seven. Both of those, um, both the eviction and the um, new agreement are elderly. Okay. Thank you. So now I'll open it up for discussion. Sue, do you have any questions? No questions. Crystal, do you have any no. further questions? I do. Um, so when I, under payments, the star is including repayment agreements, under other charges it says including write-offs. So that amount of 162.25 includes write-offs, am I reading that properly? We didn't write-off. Did, didn't write-off anything, okay. So the total amount for tenant's account receivable was 11347.45. No, 11000 That's what I just said. Did you say no, I did not. So eleven thousand three forty seven forty five. Well, that's not total payments received. That no. Yeah. That, no. Okay. So and the repayment agreements uh, total six thousand two nineteen forty one. That's how much is still outstanding. Correct. Correct. Okay. So when I do the math for that, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. So if I take this amount uh, and then I subtract this amount. I come out with 5,128.04. Is that the outstanding including write-offs? Am I doing that right? No. no okay, I so explain add, I would add the TAR balance, the 11,347.45, mm -hmm. plus the repayment agreement, 6,219.45. Okay, great. That's the outstanding. Okay, good. When do you finally decide that you're going to write something off and it's not going to be pursued anymore? So, so, hold on for a second. Pam, can you write down that uh, Crystal left the room at, it has to be for the minute, Sue, please don't. It's at 11.52. And then when she comes back, we have to make a note of return. That's required. You interrupted what I was saying. Sue, that I know. I'm rude. so sorry. I had to tell. <laughs> I had to tell Pam he's taking my minute. Right. Now would you continue, please? She knocked your paper. Would you continue then? No, that's right. No, continue. No. You didn't have a question? I did, but I'm not going to say it now. Oh. So I, th I think what you were asking is when do we determine when to write it off? In other okay. words, what is there a cap for a period of time after like six years, seven years, or when you decide that you pursued it or you're going to pursue it? Is there a, like a, like on murder mysteries, you know, they have a cold, when they open a cold case, is it opened further down the line when something sits for a while? Do you pursue it down the road? Or once it's written off, it's written off for, for good? So when we... <coughs> <coughs> when we write it off, we're only writing it off from our our books here. We are still co um, going after it. So if it's um, if it's a somebody that we can finally go after, uh, we would pursue it through collections. So it, so it it just comes off of the housing authorities. It co comes off of tenant accounts receivable, and it goes into a different category. But is the collection agency somebody that's part of? The state, or is it somebody you hire privately to go after the, these monies once the office has tried? Right, so the office tries first, and then we turn it over to the collection agency, an outside collection agency, uh -huh. and we turn it over to the Department of Revenue. 
and then the Department of Revenue will um, seize assets, right. um, tax returns and lottery winnings and things like that um, to, to pay the housing authority back. So it might you're pretty successful in getting the... It should be, yeah. We've just started to work with the Department of Revenue. Um, so hopefully that they'll be successful with that. Um, the the one that I was talking about that I don't that just was evicted, I just I don't see that going anywhere. There's no assets. There's no there's no way to real yeah. There's no yeah. tax return. Um, so that one would probably just get rid. So when you say you just started working with the DOR, mm -hmm. I feel like that was part of the process for the Department of um, Housing Authorities all over the state. So it is in the it is in the CMRs, but yeah. most housing authorities aren't doing it. Um, well, because the Department of Revenue it wasn't ready. Oh. So there's the intercept program, and there's it, we're all starting to come online now. Oh, okay. it's, it's the Amherst Housing Authority and Worcester Housing Authority. We're really using it, and now um, other housing authorities, because we're talking about it, other people are. So now other states engaged. are coming on board as well. Other, I mean, um, other town cities. Yeah. Housing yeah. authorities. Housing right. authorities, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's great. I mean, we need to do whatever we need to do, right. because this is. This, I think, as a whole, and in part, possibly, um, this is the reason why we do not have a lot of availability of housing for people that can actually be provided with housing, because you have people that have housing that are actually not being truthful. And that's not fair to those that are now homeless living in their cars with a job because they can't afford an apartment, but they can afford to be on housing, but the list is so long. You know, so it's good that the state is taking extra precautions to remedy the situation. Yes. It really is. Yep. You're absolutely right. I mean, the most of, the first bill you pay should be for your rent. Right, but what I'm saying is it's not I about the bills being paid, it's the fact that there are people who are not being honest and holding that position with the housing authority and there are people who can use it. That, but then there are people that, that don't need it. And I was supporting your point. Yeah, yeah, of course. But that, that's not fair. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I have no further questions. Rich? Uh, Crystal, do you have anything else? No. no? Okay. So, we're to the work order report. Yeah. So, it just be presented for the month of September. So, your, your routine items are on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, we have emergency inspection, on call emergency. Uh, I can't remember ever what PM is. Oh, preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance, request, and schedule. Um, so we do have an inspection company now, right? Yes, we yeah. have we have one before, but we do we, we have McRae. Yeah. We, we switched. Yeah. How do you spell MCW? Oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's McRae. It's it's straight. Yeah. M C C R I G H T. And is that for the units or that's for the grounds, the inspection? Of the units. Okay. They, they're they actually contracted with all three housing authorities, but okay. they do our Section 8, they do you our federal and state. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just well, we don't have any I thought it was so. just the grounds. No. It no. Said this, it said no. down here, trash around the dumpster and stuff like that. Well, well, that's, so on the first page is the ones that our contractor inspection company inspects. So in uh, September, they inspected three units. They were all 705s. Right. Okay. The, when it says inspection on this next, right. that's done by uh, our maintenance department because there, in this situation, there was an emergency. 24 hours. Yeah. So, so the inspection work order is a work order that's generated because of an inspection. So they go oh. in and they see oh, okay. that there's, see. there's a, a worn trip hazard. They put mm -hmm. that in there so it looks like there's a couple of them. You know, the top, right. the top needs caulking. They're finding that. 
and then our maintenance staff goes. That's yeah. what I'm. That's what okay, I was wondering right. if they did just the ground, or if it was part of like the recertification inspection, or if it's part of just a normal inspection. Like no. it is. Is it incorporate incorporates everything? It does. Okay. Yeah. So but they, again, oh, I'm sorry, sis. So because they do these in piecemeal, like three, they're showing three here. Do they charge you? For each three, or do they charge you like after they're done with everybody? How and where will we see the expense of these inspection company coming in rather than them doing it from the office, which we had for majority of the years? Except we did have that before. I mean, this McGrath, but not many years. And then Pat Kane, you had a different inspector even before that too. They charge thirty-five dollars a unit. Oh, wow. so it's not. It's a very low cost for them to come in and do that. Um, and, and they, and they charge to have this. And, and they, yeah. they charge per you when they do the unit. So mm -hmm. we don't pay an upfront fee for the entire um, <coughs> process. Con uh, yeah, the supplier co complex. And they do it at recertification with move in time. So it, that's how they're scheduled. Oh, so they only do it twice? <laughs> uh, they do it once a year. Oh, once? Yeah. So when they do it the once, that's when they find out all of this is leaked, the toilet is clogged. No, no, no. That's what I was trying to explain. Yeah. The first page is our, our contracted inspection company. They inspected three units in September. Right. Likely research. Right. Okay. Four. So their inspection she generates. Said four. There's only three on here. I said three. And she. So what I'm saying, I see, oh, so I see. Oh, there's four work orders. There's yeah, four there. work orders generated from the For three two, inspections. Two yeah. inspections. Yeah. The three. There's three inspections on the front page. Nope. One, three. One, three. Okay. So there were two units inspected. Somebody came back twice. Whatever. It doesn't no, matter. Just, the, the work orders are broken up by the type of. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So. I want to see, the, is this the first page right here that you're talking yes, about? With the word it word is. Word? So, the same number? Well, you know. Can I help? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Maybe one yeah. So, um, that should come out to the unit ID yeah. on the report. That should be on there. Um, but there's there are, for the inspections, there are only two units that were inspected okay. on Parkway. Okay. Okay. Under the unit ID, you'll see how they, so there's two separate work orders. At that, that very first inspection, you'll see it's a work order. It's that because it's an emer it's considered an emergency. Okay. It has to be rectified in 24 hours. Okay. It was a smoke detector, so that's that's why it was split out. So okay, so that four six out. one because you said now there's two units instead of three, right? There is only two. Okay, units. No. and four four six one and four four six two is one unit. No, no, that's, that's the work first, order number. Yeah, that's my first page. I don't have anything else. So that's the work order number. ID, that's the unit right. number, and that's the unit, same unit number. I do not have that, is what I'm explaining. Yeah, you do. Yeah. See? I just asked that. Okay, look. The, this is work order. Oh, I see. BW02 and BW01 are the, the uh, building, um, the apartments, right? Can I see you? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I would ask you. So you have, she does, you do have a different work order. Thank you. Because you yours, uh, your unit numbers are missing. Thank you. Yeah, my unit doesn't have it either. I'm wondering if yours, no, see, I have it. Yeah. So I have, I have the master one. Okay, oh, hey, that's why so, I was confused. Okay. She's got what you have, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have all the data that I'm looking Thank at. Thank you. Oh, right, but it has the same data I'm looking at. I'm wondering what Pamela was talking about. Well, exactly. So, but I you know the rest of it. I just needed the unit numbers because they were like specified. Zero. Yeah, there are no which unit. So they all. So these are these are work units. Orders. So this is one unit, yeah, but, but two different work orders. orders one for emergency. Okay. So you have the the main page you said. I do. Right. So what does the main page look like? So I can have an idea. Oh, can I? See so that? just a couple, a couple of extra ones. Yeah. Can we have a copy of that. No, because we wouldn't publish that because it does have the unit number. So there's you don't want to put together some of the information. Um, it's confidential. Oh, now I see. Yeah, like well, there yeah. is something about someone coming back from hospital. We wouldn't want to say you know yeah, what no. unit but that is. But if someone's having recertification, how many months before the recertification? They're not getting it during the month of recertification. How many months before oh, the recertification? They, they'll get it you, typically the month before their move-in date. No, we're talking about as far as the people living here already. Right, like the month before their research date. 
So if you move, if you moved in in February, we would inspect you in January. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No. So what would you say, expect? Them? I understand that, but that's not what I. Oh, what were you asking? Now? I'm confused too. She said, I just wanted to know how far in advance when your recertification is coming up are you inspected. She said a month before. So what she's saying is let's say you moved in January 1st, that reinspection, or even if you're initially moving in is a month before. So if you're going to be a new tenant for January 1st, it's going to be December. Well, we do the inspections. Right. Yeah. Right. And if it's a recert, it moved in in January, it'll be December. Right. Right. Yeah, so, so you're the doing the reinspections for, for moving, but the in the hired inspectors are coming just for the recertification. Yes. Yep. Oh, right. We do move in inspections and move out inspections. The inspector okay. just does the annual inspections that um, that are required okay. by EOHLC. So Amherst Housing does the research and this McWright does the move-in. No, okay. opposite. Opposite. Okay. <laughs> opposite. Yeah, Amherst Housing doing. does the move in and Amherst Housing and, and, and the hired in. company does the research. And exit. Right. And then the hiring does the research. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Any further so, if, 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 if I could just point out too, so um, when Amherst Housing Authority took over, we did begin the 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 um, the service of taking in and out air conditioners, which had not been offered here before. Um, I'm a firm believer in it because one, it's our tenants are not, um, they're heavy a pieces of equipment and you have to put in and out. Um, and then also, uh, you used to have the weird windows here that were hard to install and um, <clears throat> it also protects our windows now. Yeah. We only had two people that took us up on that off. Out of the whole yeah, but around. if you walk if you walk around, you'll see there's a lot of air conditioners still in the units. And that can cause a problem with heat usage because yeah. of the air coming in. Is there any way you can make it mandatory? Because I know some housing authorities in some elderly buildings in different towns, they make it mandatory. Maintenance comes in whether you want them to or not to remove the air conditioner. So it is mandatory through the um, uh, in the policy that they have been removed. But so what happens is, and I was thinking about this this weekend, and it's, it's a busy weekend. Um, it is mandatory, and then what will happen is I'll get an influx of reasonable accommodations that say I need to have my air conditioner in. Um, I've been approving those on a yearly basis, saying that we're going to revisit that the next year as well. Um, because, but it becomes a lot of administrative red tape um, wow. and a fight over an air conditioner. I think that part of the reason, and I have a couple of residents on the board, so if you can indulge me, I think part of the reason is is that the lack of storage to store the, the air conditioner. Oh. Um, yeah, and these are... Listener. Yeah, and they are, in, we do have smaller units here. So I was looking um, online and, and researching, and we could, what we could do is, you know the wings that come out yes. on? That's really, those are terrible, because yeah. that's where you, yeah. but they do have this, this foam that we can put over that looks nice, that will keep the air out, and then there's also, um, so they're two separate products, a quilted insulated cover that goes on the and so it's inside the apartment with a nice drawstring, yeah. so it will weatherize the um, the air conditioner as much as possible, and then that that drawstring will allow um, because there are tenants that do have asthma issues or COPD or whatever issues that periodically use it. They don't use it all the time, but they use it depending on the day. And that just seems like a better approach instead of getting into um, in and out, in and out. And yeah. The, and then the people who do have medical problems could get a you know, waiver for that from their doctor saying that their air conditioner can stay in. For I think what, what she, because I was wondering why that's not going to be for cover. 
because if you put the cover over it, it can stop, as you stated, some of the cold air from coming in and the hot air from going out. Do right. so you know if the tenants are using that? No, well, so what I'm proposing is that we actually, that the housing Just authority supplies it. Yeah. Right, and that we bypass the reasonable accommodation process because it's just administratively burdensome. It's burdensome to the, the tenant. They have to fill out a form. They have to give authorization. It right. goes to the doctor. doctor. Yeah. It's yeah. just a lot of red tape for, I, because I think really what the issue is, is there's not storage. The new windows you can see, um, in Crystal, I don't think you were here before the new windows. No. You came out. Yeah. They were the, the side casement windows, so you put the air conditioner in, and then you put this terrible piece of plywood. So we above it. Above it. So it looked awful, but now the new windows do still give you yeah. that. So I don't so know what you, if you... I, I would be all for that just to protect our tenants who, as you said, cannot take these in and out themselves and there's no storage, etc. Uh, but we can't vote on that today, but I think we should put that on the agenda for November. Yeah, like, um, yeah let me check if we have the air pump. So I think that's also a good, besides what Reese is saying, the medical part. Mm -hmm. Because now the tenants will have to go to the doctor, make appointments, get there, have it filled out, wait for the answer. Now they can, if it's mandatory and the, and, and the housing authority supplies it, they can just put it on and remove it when they feel. And the other part you were talking about, the phone part, where does that fit? Mm -hmm. So the foam part, it's a its a three-piece part that would go on both sides of where the wings are. Where the wings are. And then there's another piece that goes on the, between, you know, where the window the comes top down. The top window. The sash that comes okay, there, so it goes there. So it's very clean and neat looking. And this foam is wide. It takes the place of the wings. You put it right over the wings. Oh, so, it, so it's complimentary. So you don't have to do anything. You just no, you just there. leave the air conditioner in. Maintenance would come in and install all of that. And then if and when the tenant wanted to use the air conditioner, they could just undo. Take the hood off. Exactly. They don't even have to mess with the phone. Right. So this would require a change in policy for our subcommittee. I'm not sure if you actually have an AC policy. We do. We do. You do. Okay. But it's an ancient. Yeah. So okay. So we, would, amended, we yeah. changed it. So we, so we would revise the policy. Mm -hmm. Subcommittee can do that pretty quick, I think. We'll talk to you about that, about the wording. Mm -hmm and then give it to you and you do your magic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would involve installing... Um, well, we've been installing and removing them for no, years. No, no. I'm saying it would involve installing... Um, oh, what's the word for it? Insulation. Insulation. And uh, allow the, the ACs to be in your round. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can... I'm looking at my policy subcommittee guy over here. So can we work on that? Sure. Okay. Um, and then we can, if we can get on the move, then we can have that ready and submitted to you. You've already done your magic before our November, yeah. um, November 19th meeting, I think it is, yeah. Does that sound, I mean, we're not taking a vote, but the no, tenor of the board, does that sound good, Sue? Yeah, fine. Crystal, yeah, okay. Um, Pamela, is there anything else about that that, regarding no. reporters? No. Okay, anybody else have any further discussion or questions? Oh, right. Let's move on to board correspondence. Uh, and the first is, uh, a is disclosure of correspondence between commissioners and non-board members. I was notified that one of our commissioners had a discussion with the chair of another housing authority uh, regarding the uh, uh, management agreement. And uh, I would prefer if that commissioner would self-identify and give us their side of the story. It had nothing to do with the manager agreement. It had to do with the September 24th board meeting. I wanted to know why he felt why other board members from Belchertown and uh, Amherst didn't get together with us when we were discussing something like a raise for a, the executive director. We all sh share the executive director. 
and I thought it was strange to bring it up at a meeting. It wasn't on the agenda about the merit raise. The first time we heard about it is when we voted on it. Number one is you, you didn't vote on my raise. Well, we discussed it, okay. No, no you didn't. We did. You we we talked about it at the last, at the you September meeting. You talked about the meeting. management agreement. You, no, you that's not what I talked to him about. No, I talked to him no, about I'm many sorry. things. No, at the meeting, we talked about the management agreement. We did not talk about my, my raise or my... Well, that's how I knew about it, because we just Because, you, because the, the, part of the management agreement comes from, the fee comes from the executive director, executive director salary worksheet. Right. It was not pertaining to me. It was pertaining to... Well, I, I understood it that it was pertaining to you because I heard you say that there was a merit raise that was okayed by the Amherst Housing Authority. So I, I contacted the Amherst I Housing Authority. I did not say that. We'll have to watch the tape. But I, uh, you I actually have the meeting minutes in front of you. No, I know, but then we'll... Anyway, so, and, and there was a, a few other things uh, that I well, discussed, but I had nothing, the management agreement was just a, a teeny little, little piece. What were the other things? The other things we talked about was uh, the operating budget which wasn't presented until, it wasn't on the agenda, and you're such a stickler for putting things on the agenda. It was presented to us without being on the agenda. So what I'm saying is we, the annual operating budget in the September not, meeting that was, was part, given to us after the meeting had already started, and we also, it wasn't on the agenda. Because it came in late. He right, but it, it wasn't on the agenda. We were always told, don't right, but it was added. It was added properly to the agenda. It was to be done properly. When I try to bring things up, I'm always stopped because I'm always told it's not on the agenda. Yeah. You can't say this because it's not on the agenda. Well, but because <laughs> you made a board, a board vote was added. It, it was the very first line item says topics right. not reasonably anticipated. It was presented, and the entire board, including you, voted unanimously to add it because we added it. We got it late from Gary DePace. It, it was not uh, to Pamela from Gary DePace uh, within 48 hours of the meeting. It came within 48 hours, I mean, before 48 hours. It might have, but it still meeting. was not on the agenda. It doesn't it, matter. It was added. Well, why, I mean, I, I feel like when it, I want to say something and put it on the agenda, I'm always shut down. But, but I think that according to open meeting law right. and Robert's Rules of Order, et cetera, if the topic is re uh, for open meeting law, if it's reasonably anticipated with, uh, within 48 hours in advance of the meeting that's been properly agended and noticed to the town, it, you can add things like the operating budget, et cetera, was sent by our fee accountant, right? It doesn't it's, matter. It's, it's two sets of rules, as I is how I can see I, it. Can I just interject your comment? That, that was not that was not part of the conversation with the board. Yes, it was. Right. So I talked uh, to the board about. I talked about, and not, I talked to the chair about many things. I mean, but nothing make, that you know. I'm allowed to have communication with a no, board not, member. Not no, as, no, you're not. Not as a board member. That yes. that, that is what I'm trying to explain to you. Number two. Uh, or number one, I'm going to go back to number one. If our fee accountant supplies us with an operating budget, that's going to start soon, like October 1st. So it should be on the agenda. Uh, it wasn't ready until right before the meeting that it was printed out and given it to us, and we all voted unanimously to add it to the agenda because it was not reasonably anticipated to even be in by that meeting time. So it was yes. Early. It was a, yeah. So number two, when you, when I ask for, uh, items not reasonably anticipated, you often have brought up items that you've been anticipating for weeks or months or days before the agenda came out. You have never yet contacted me and said, I would like to put something on the agenda. But I felt, I feel that that particular part of our meeting, when we anticipate or think of something, we're not always able to think of it in a timely manner to let you know to put it on. And I feel that if certain people put, decide to put something on, you okay it. But every time I try to put something on, even if I think it's relevant or having to do with what we're discussing, 
there's not one time that you have to shut me down. If, it, if it's something relevant to something we're discussing, it will happen during the agenda items that are already listed. If it's not, and it's something that could be reasonably anticipated, I'm trying to save you from getting an open meeting law violation suit. And I'm looking at certain things like discussing an increase of a merit raise salary. I don't get it. As, we didn't get with that. I, it, I, we discussed it. And we discussed it. To me, I think that's an open law meeting violation. Okay, right? okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. right. okay. You, it, it, you may discuss. Yes. I think, okay, what, what should happen now is maybe, I understand your point, I understand exactly what you're saying, but as Pamela said, just review, review the tape and just see if the information that you have brought before us is, is spoken about in that tape. Right. And then this way you can call Reese and put it on the agenda for next time. But as of now, this is really taking But I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's the right. I think that we should move on from this. If we have other things right. besides this, we can go forward. I don't think it's a time or place to be chastising a, a, a board no. member for behavior. I think it's wrong to even be on the agenda to begin with, it's something we could have a special meeting about. But I, I cannot have a special meeting. No, I meant a special meeting. She means a special like discussion. You, you don't you get it. Right. But I mean, I think you try any way you can to always cut me off at the knees and you, I, from the very beginning of being on this board. So I'm letting her know, because she's new, that this is a continuum. This isn't something, even when she was walking out of the room and I was trying to talk to Pam, you tried to stop me in the middle of my sentence. I can never start a sentence without you stopping me. If it's not, Strictly on the agenda that relates to it, you, you shut me down. So basically, I think what you're saying this is more to do with with right. Reese's behavior towards you. Right. And, and, and the previous chairperson yeah. too. She had that complaint. We're the off the subject that you no, want to have. The the she actually did. It's on the, it's on the no. minutes. Um, it is in the minutes. It's on the video. And that, the other so. thing I was bringing up with the uh, with, and I'll just say one more thing with the other board members that we're always you're constantly bringing up open meeting law violations and ethics violations. And I think as a board, we don't have to look at violations all the time. We have to look at ethics in general. I think there's certain things that are done here that are unethical. So it has nothing to do with breaking a law. It has to do with ethics in general. And a lot of things just rub me the wrong way. A lot of it has to do with the keeping of, of all the monies from the window, the keeping of all the monies from the ramp, you know, and keeping 100%. That to me is unethical. But wanting to buy so, a second vehicle for Amherst Housing, well, we haven't okay, had one to address that. Okay. Well, we yes. haven't had one bought for uh, e either of the other housing authority. We just bought one for Amherst, and we want to buy another. To me, that's not ethical. If we're all under the same umbrella, we have to share. I'm a firm believer in sharing, and that instead of her constantly saying this is an open meeting law violation, this is an ethics violation, I think we have to look at ethics in general. And there's a lot of things that I go home with and feel really bad about because I don't think it's fair. There's a lot of unfairness. May I speak? So I, I take umbrage with what you're doing. You just insulted me and you insulted well, she I, insult I, excuse me, me. I'm speaking. Okay. You no, insulted me and you no. insulted the Amherst Housing Authority for coming to the board with the proper documentation for a board vote. There is nothing unethical about the Housing Authority as a contractor requesting payment for services. The, the Hadley Housing Authority did nothing other than board approval for the window project. We asked for the management, the right. admin fee. It was granted by a board vote. If you did not vote for it, but your board members did, there is nothing unethical about that. You're wrong. And I it's didn't say insulting. I didn't you say did that. say I said unethical. Look at ethics. I didn't and say you were unethical. It does, but that's so you're mincing words. And then it was absolutely explained to you about the truck. But I still if don't you feel right about it. So then put it on the budget for Hadley to buy a new truck. That's how you get it. We're not a region. You are your own housing authority. If you want a truck, put it in your budget. But I don't understand how, what I'm saying to you as an executive director. 
I don't see how you, I how you feel that all this money should be coming to Amherst. It's not coming yes. to Amherst. No, it's, it's our project money for two projects and the leftover is going 100%. It's not leftover. It's a budgeted line item. Ten but anybody could write down how many how okay. much maintenance. Okay, okay. 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 Right. She, okay. You, are, Sue, you need to get training and you need to retain yes. the information because you are, you I don't know you're, you're absolutely okay. wrong every single I time and in it's frustrating. We are going to you have spoken. I'm not done. Crystal has spoken. It is now my turn. We will come back to you, Sue. So, when, when you take the training, which I don't think you have yet taken the board training, you will find out, and as part of the ethics training, which I thought you had taken. I did. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll see if you have your certificate or whatever. So the point is you learn that you cannot, without a board vote authorizing you to, you may not go to any other, you can't go to a town official, you cannot go to a town department, you cannot go to another housing authority chair or board member to ask them anything about Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. You must always bring it back here, your fidelity, your fiduciary duty, and this goes for all commissioners, is to the Hadley Housing Authority, what is financially and legal for Hadley Housing Authority. You can't go, unless it's a training issue, uh, you can go to a training program on ethics and board of commissioners and ask your questions there, but otherwise you cannot go to a chair of a board of commissioners for housing anywhere, anywhere, and be asking these questions which could be construed to be an ethics violation of interfering in a government contract. And you're a commissioner. But you yourself went to the select board without asking permission to the rest of, from the rest of us board members, and that's something that you did. So I don't think that you should be at, a finger. at the time. Uh, Rich was the chair. Rich asked Pamela to go to represent the board. But you didn't ask the rest of the board. I, I am speaking. I oh, have the, the rest I of have the floor. Board. You may not speak until I authorize you to speak because that's Robert's rules of order. All right, so Pamela Rogers and myself went at the request of Chair Whitkiss. This was October 19th of 2022 to address the select board about uh, an agenda item by the select board posted 48 hours in advance of the meeting wherein the select board of Hadley was to discuss the vacant state appointee seat. The Hadley Housing Authority had not been notified or asked to participate as it should have been. This was a clarification of appropriate procedure. Now, at the request of the chair, Whitkiss asked us to go to clarify this procedure that is acceptable without board vote. It had nothing to do with a, a board vote or an agenda item. It had to do with clarifying procedure with the select board's methods uh, wherein they wanted to fill a vacancy without consulting the Hadley Housing Authority. Maxine, that's a story that's not the story that I know why you went to the select board. Well, it's on videotape. In fact, I'll tell you, it's the select board meeting of October 19th, 2022. It's a two hour and 25 minutes to two hours and 32 minutes. Those are the time stamps. But the real truth why you went to the select board is you told them to butt out of Hadley Housing Authority business. That is not at all what was said. Well, I'm well aware of it, so I do know. Because you were in attendance as well. Because why? You were there too. I wasn't there. I believe that was the meeting they were there. No. Okay. Was, they were not there. It was 2022. So, so it was, was 20, saying, October 19th of no, 2022. At 2 hours and 25 minutes to 2 hours and 32 minutes, you can 
see the entire conversation. And uh, this was a clarification of appropriate procedure, policy procedure, have the housing, housing authority apprised the select board that the Board of Commissioner expects to be included in interview of a potential can, uh, appointees the same as the Hadley Board of Health is? This is the second, this is a different time. No, this was the only time. This was the only time I appeared at the select board meeting with our executive director to clarify policy and procedure for appointing people. Oh, it's that's it, it's not a different time. It's the only time. If I could just suggest that it, it's just if we could just stick to the agenda items. Well, she's the one that brought it up. I'm actually you talk about interrupting. Right. So if we could stick to agenda items, you have lots of strong personal beliefs. You cannot change regulation or law no, from that. No, but I seat. think humiliating somebody and talking about something that should have been discussed outside of a of a meeting. But what I said to you as an executive, that, that she yeah. loves to humiliate me or cut me off in these constantly, and she's done it since the day I've been on the board. I know. And that you made no comment for, but constantly stick by your side. I, I feel that that was proper to bring something up about what I said. You were not there in the conversation between me and the executive and the chairman of the other board. You have no idea what we talked about. I, I do because I was contacted. But he, I was contacted. Yes. So if you want to call the chair, I didn't alive, say that. But okay. We so talked hold about on. many things. So hold on. And you not got all to do okay, with so the Hold on. So right. again, what what is being said is you do not have authorization to act as a board member without a, and go. I outside. did act as a board member. Oh, you acted as a tenant. You I am the one to know more about why we don't get together more okay. often as okay. a board. Okay. Right. So when you take the training, you will learn that you are twenty four seven a board of commissioner, a commissioner for the board of housing for Hadley. Twenty four seven. Right. You are specifically not allowed to Remember go to that yourself. You, you are specifically not allowed right. to go talk to any town official or of other housing authority board members, whatever, right. without specific authorization requiring a vote from this board. And remember that. So yes. remember that you're not. And if you continue this behavior, we will have to make an ethics complaint. Oh, go right ahead, but you have to bring up the fact that you brought this up even at a meeting. I am happy to do that well, because when I went with Pamela, it was to discuss policy between the select board and the board of commissioners. And that's okay. Not sure it is. Is it? We were authorized by the board. Yeah, we were. Yeah. So, uh, we were not I'm. I'm happy to to move on. Rich has asked that we move on. Uh, Crystal left at Pam. Crystal left at twelve thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but are you clear on the limits of your behavior? I'm not going to respond to you anymore. I'm your chair. Are well, you then clear? act like a chair and stop being a bully? It's not I am trying to prevent you from being I don't in mean, trouble don't for open media law violations and ethics violations. You don't have to instigate the whole thing, so <laughs> you're, you're the instigator bringing this up and how are you going to move along? She's, she's, she's being a victim. Okay. Um, and I am. Okay. For sure. To help this process, I do want to wait until, okay, so Crystal's coming back, Pam at 10.33. All right, I'm sorry, 12.33? Okay, so we are moving on, Crystal, unless you had anything else you wanted to say. Okay, so neither do I. So uh, item B, uh, 4B is subcommittee to create code of conduct for commissioners. I will introduce this. The, um, uh, the state asked all the towns to adopt a code of conduct. The state provided a template uh, through um, uh, let's see, Massachusetts Municipal Association, who used an organization called Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association, an attorney, a group of attorneys actually wrote a code of conduct template, which 
every town and city has, uh, you know, basically adopted, uh, towns, I should say. Uh, Hadley adopted it, uh, I think it was July 19th of 2023, and it was all signed by sometime in August of 2023. And this, Code of conduct applies to towns and all town boards and committees. If you're on a town, uh, a, a, a committee or a board um, operating within the town of Hadley, and we don't count because we're state, but if you, you are on a town committee, you've received a copy of this code of conduct and are familiar with this. I don't think you're on any other town. I know Crystal's on a bunch, but but uh, Sue, I don't, you're not on one. No. Well, I am on one and I had to sign this code of conduct. Uh, Rich, are you, are you on any other? No. Okay, so I had to sign this. There's an employee manual that goes along with it that more or less doesn't apply to us. We're special employees, but. Yes. Okay, so <coughs> we do not have a code of conduct because we're a state organization, however, when Rich and I reviewed this code of conduct, we did it for the town of Hadley's. We went through the town of Hadley's last year about this time. And we started working on it and then other things took over that needed board attention. So I'm going to suggest that our um, policy subcommittee revisit the code of conduct. We can use the one for Hadley or we can use the template. We probably should look at both and come up with a code of conduct using the appropriate language. So for instance, where it says, where it says select board, we will say uh, board of commissioners, that kind of thing. But that we adopt this. So uh, I would like to know, I, I wanna know if, what the, what the board, you know, take it to a vote. Do you want for us to deal with this code of conduct? I need a motion. I mean, I say no because we're inundated with conducts and rules and regs, and I really feel that uh, it's just one more thing. We're volunteers. Okay, we're not we here. We're not here. Yes, we need a motion. You just ask me. I need a motion. Yeah, a motion. Okay, so Crystal moves that the uh, policy subcommittee uh, do the revisions necessary and then bring back a code of conduct for the, is that what your motion is? Can I get a second? second. Yeah. Rich, second. I will now open it for discussion. Sue. Number one, I think that we need, I'd like to know more about, but if the subcommittee is going to be doing this, how long is the subcommittee going to be the subcommittee? Because we, I think it's time to, because the same two people have been the head of the subcommittee policies and the rest of the board members who have requested copies of policies have not been provided the copies. That I, I, I call them held hostage. I've asked for certain copies of ones we've worked on and ones we haven't worked on. And because of that reason, I think we need, before this is worked on, we need to think about changing who's on the subcommittee and giving other people a chance. All right, and Crystal, do you have any comments? That's the same thing I was going to bring up, similar to that. I think that we should all be following this. Right. right. We cannot. Because it's a violation of open meeting law to have two people, more than two people on the subcommittee. Unless you, you come together as a special meeting. Unless we come together as because a special meeting. Because I know meeting. on other uh, committees we do have subcommittees with people from the actual committee. More than the quorum? No, not more than a quorum. Okay, right. so that, okay. so right. for, so as it's two. Um, three, yeah. Right, because so, there's. We, so, we have to have less than three people. Right, or you call it, or you, or you, or you host a meeting. I would, so I would prefer that. So this way we can all have an input on what the conduct and we can all be in agree, agreement to what's going to be said and done. So we can all be comfortable and nothing will be brought up that's uncomfortable. There so doesn't need to be anything, it's my turn now, there doesn't need to be anything uncomfortable. This is a template. And what we would be doing is essentially just changing the language in an electronic document sending it out to everyone. We can do that before the meeting. Here okay. is the first draft. Okay, that's fine. We will not be adopting anything. We can't mm -hmm. as a policy subcommittee. All we can do is get this in electronic document form, change the language like from select board to board of commissioners, and 
and then send it out. Say, this is the first draft. We'll discuss it at the next meeting. How's that? I'm uh, not asking you because now it's Rich's turn. Rich? I agree with that. Pamela? Right, so the subcommittee does, right, the subcommittee works on a draft and then the draft is presented to the whole board and then the no. whole board has input onto what is done. That's not okay. what's been, it's been the subcommittee. So, 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 so if I can just, so, so we're, going to, we're going to do that going forward. So this, with this one, because this policy is applicable to the board, when it when it is applicable to the tenants, I meet with the tenants to get their right. input on it, yeah. and then the board has input on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, this, and that was all done. Yeah. This was just yeah. social. Yeah. But we still didn't address the fact that we said, is there a time for a subcommittee maybe to assign a new subcommittee? That's not the, that's not because the of the fact it's been going. I mean, yeah. you two already. <laughs> That is not the motion on the floor. That is not the motion on the floor. But I'm bringing it on the floor. Put it, put it. So take a vote for that one and then change the subcommittee. So Sue's obviously a volunteer to be on the subcommittee. Right. And be on the subcommittee of policies in general. Because I think it's been more than a year that you guys have been on it. Okay, do you have anything to say, Crystal? I, I don't Susan? think we should, we should go that far. I think what, this is my opinion with Pamela, uh, what the process is, it's amended, and then we come together to review it, and then we discuss it at the meeting. I think maybe we should start on that, so this way we can all have a chance going forward, because I have not been part of the past, so I do not know what has happened in the past. I am on the committee now. I would like to start off going forward to see how this works. And if it doesn't work the way that we all agree on, then maybe we can revisit having a different subcommittee. But isn't there a time limit on uh, that? That was Crystal. Now we're to Maine. Right. Okay, so please, let's keep the order, because otherwise we just talk over each other. Um, I think that's a wonderful suggestion. So if the policy subcommittee presents a draft and the rest of the board, or all the board looks at it and go, this is a board-related policy, we don't really, we, we want to do something different, then we can ask for a motion to change the subcommittee people. Okay? I disagree. I think it's time. It's not I think it's time to change It's not something. your... Right. Now we go to Rich. Rich? I agree with you just said. Okay. So uh, we will go around again because this is a hot topic apparently. Soon do you have any further comments? No further comments. No. Crystal? I have nothing. None. Rich? No. Nothing. So that uh, I will call for the vote and the uh, question, I will restate the question from the motion is that uh, the board then is requesting that the uh, policy subcommittee review the, co uh, the template for the code of conduct from the, that's right, the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association, uh, that the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association um, presented a template for, and the town of Hadley used to create their code of conduct. So, uh, we, we could also look at Hadley's code of conduct, and I'm sure it's fine. And, and then, a, you know, we'll look at all of those primary sources. So I will call for the vote. Sue. I guess I'll abstain. No, it's do you, yes or no. You have to do yes, have to or, yes or no, or no. Unless, uh, unless you know that you have an, a conflict of interest, Sue. A conflict of interest, yes. I'm Do you have a conflict of interest? Yes, I do. Because what, you, you have to state it. What's your conflict? My conflict of interest. interest, and I think now more than ever, we need to, be, because we haven't touched policy for a while, now is a good time to make a change of who is in the subcommittee. Okay, that's not a conflict of interest. To me, it's a conflict of interest. It doesn't matter. I can't grow it's, properly. It's not a conflict of interest. To me, it is. So you. Your vote has to be yes or no because What's you have no to vote. then, yeah. Okay. Crystal? So just to confirm, a subcommittee will create the code of conduct, right? Draft. Review, review draft. the draft. Well, then it will be sent to the board, mm -hmm. and then we will review it. And mm -hmm. anything we have that's regarding any changes or whatsoever with this draft, mm -hmm. we will then put on the agenda to, to speak Exactly. About. Okay. Just so if I we can, can, if we can get it, to, yeah, just a sec. If we can get it together, 
by the next board meeting, which is November 19th, right. Right. Yes? Yes. Uh, then you'll have it on November 19th, if not December 17th, because you know we've got stuff going on. Right. So okay, so uh, yeah, so that would be the plan. Yes, I have nothing. Uh, I vote yes. Was there a motion made? Oh no, I'm sorry. Pamela. No, I was just going to say in response, it, it absolutely goes on the agenda as a whole and you discuss it and even at the meeting the entire board can make changes to the yes. policy oh, okay. and yeah. then put, and implement it. Okay. Yeah. But to date I have found that no changes okay. have ever been made. It's a different policy. But it's a different so type you, of policy. No, you, no changes okay. have ever been made on Are you, If you're fit, there Rich has to go. Now meeting. it's your turn to speak. To date, being a board member, any policy that's been worked on by the subcommittee, I haven't seen one change that the board of commissioners wanted. And because of that reason, I'm just afraid this is just going to be one more time where well, that just, subcommittee just, is going to create a policy and that work and, and so our it's voice a will different not be heard. Now. It's only one different. It doesn't matter. My voice is strong. But I have a voice. They have a voice. But I also know the past. But that's the past. You can't live in the past, so you have to give it a chance. Give me a I chance. I give me a chance, okay? Yeah. All right. I have. You're in the middle of the vote. Uh, well, we haven't quite got. Okay. You got a Any no? Yes. For, I'm, uh, okay. You got so we got a no? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Yes. Three. Yeah. Yeah. What? Extra. You extra. Yes, you have extra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our public, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Our member of the public votes yes too. So. He's such a good one. He is. Okay. So now we are to commissioners' discussion. So for our future meetings, we have already scheduled November nineteenth, twenty twenty-four, at eleven a.m. And I am proposing December 17th at 11 a.m. because the following week is Christmas, the week after that is New Year's. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to continue this middle of the month meeting thing until we get through these holidays. Uh, so I will uh, call for just, ju I don't think it's a votable thing, it's just. I think it's, so you don't think the 17th will be good? No, I'm saying it will be good. Oh, okay. it, it's better than seven days after that. Yeah, it's better than any time after that. <laughs> yeah, it's better than New Year. Uh, we have to let them know that there's a change. Also, the media people that we're changing. They we do. do that. We, we're good. Okay. They're good. Okay. So a general consensus from the board. This is not a vote. You're okay with it, Sue? Are you okay with December oh, 17th? Rich. I'm fine. Okay, so the December 17th at 11 a.m. will be the December board meeting. November 19th, of course, is our November board meeting. Okay, so now the next item, uh, 5B, is update of commissioner required training certificates, including open meeting law, conflict of interest, and EOHLC training, paper copies, bring paper copies to the meeting or email digital certificates before the meeting. I've received no emails. Sue, do you have your no, documents? No. I've already told you before the meeting I did not have uh, Well, this is during the meeting and it right. has to be recorded. Um, have you taken the state yes. ethics Yes, I have. Uh, do you have an idea when you did that? I don't know, but I'm, that's already been discussed with Pamela in previous meetings. Well, we, we need it on record, so uh, have you taken the ethics training? Yes, I have. And have you taken you... the open meeting law training? Yes, I did. Have you taken the EOHLC training? I'm not sure. But no. What's that? No. Is that the one that we were waiting for? Yeah, it's the one for? we're having trouble with. Okay. Um, you still have trouble with it? Yeah, if we're every, with everybody. But it's not just everybody. Just everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I got the board training. I, I took that one. I'll, I'm, going, I'm looking at my phone now. Just okay, good. Uh, if you could just email me the. No, no, I want you to make sure that's it because oh, okay. I thought it was. Okay. But then we'll be so do you, uh, do, uh, it's just a question and you've answered the question. You think you've taken the ethics training soon. You I think know you've taken the right. open meeting law training. You have not provided certificates and you know you haven't taken EOHLC training. Right. Okay. But that's, that was the question that I'm asking. That's it. Give me five minutes. Since you We're waiting for. I will come back around, Sue. I always do. But I was talking with you right then. No, you're not talking with me. So, uh, Crystal. Yeah. So, um, um, I've taken all my training. I've taken all my training. 
I um, have to find out how to get a copy because because I am on other boards, I have taken all my training. And I'm looking right now to show you um, my certificate for, just to be sure, it says the local housing authority board member training, you received a total score of 100%. Is that the board meeting? Okay. Good job. So, so just I show you that. But I, so I, just can't, I can't download it. I do it and it doesn't do it. I, so can, I, I can look online and okay. check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so I brought mine, and I'm happy to share. Where they go? Oh, okay. So I've taken my state ethics. How did you get your, your certificate? I just printed it off. Okay. It's off. They send it to every all of these organizations yeah, send them by email. Yeah, that's email. I can't find trouble. it. I just do it on the computer yeah. and then print it off. Yeah. Yeah, oh, those right. I didn't. So you might have to do it in here or something. Okay. Yeah, you just computer. go. Because I don't. Hold on, we've got crosstalk here. Right. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. So, so I, I will t tell the folks that are having trouble. So I ask for your last, your most recent certificate of training. Right. So, uh, I mean, for you, you've been on so many boards. It might be two years ago, right. you know, that you took it. So just. Give me your most recent. So for State Ethics Commission, it's under Skillburst. So if you use keyword Skillburst, search in your email. S-K-I-L-L-B-U-R-S-T, mm -hmm. all one word. So if you look under Skillburst, it'll, it'll come up every time you've had communication with Skillburst. If you, under the search, put attachments, then it will be done. I search it. I just okay, great. Uh, this is the open meeting law training. This comes from um, the AG's office. So actually, it comes from from um, Massachusetts. So here's my. Oh, it's not a certificate. It's just a letter. It's a letter, but they send it to. Oh, okay. So, uh, and then a certificate of completion for the local housing authority board yeah. member training. Of course, I took mine back when. Uh, who was it? UMass Online offered it, and now it's uh, TrackStar. So all the trainings as of last November are from TrackStar. But you have to. You also remember the fact that UMass was having trouble with their. I just said that. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't say TrackStar. So I took they're not UMass. easy to find. Okay. TrackStar is T R A K. No, I know. And I'm just, okay. Yeah. So basically, the open meeting law. Yeah, comes from, yeah, comes from where? So I can look it comes from that from Massachusetts, yeah. from that attorney general. Attorney general. Okay, that's what I thought. But if you put open meeting law, it'll give you effort. Well, what I have, it says you have attended and completed it, but I don't see where to print out my certificate. You just click on it and then print. So no, I know how to print it. I okay, I say I don't see the certificate to print it. I don't. Okay, I only have the email saying you've completed it. Okay, so yeah. just so I can't send me the one. email. So send me the email that says you've completed it. That's all my letter oh, says okay. anyway, that I've completed it. Oh, yeah. So, um, because some of these, like I'm due for all of mine coming up, you know, so I know I have to retake all these because they're every two years, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, but that, I would have to take mine as well. Right. You need to check because because yeah. we're going when we're on several boards we do have to keep up with. Yeah, and we're required. Just refresh one. I yeah. just refresh the uh, I just a, a new open meeting law. I refresh refresh something else on the eye. So I I am constantly updating my. my yeah. Job. So the responsibility for which we're held accountable is for each commissioner to keep up with their training. It's not the executive director's job. They, our executive director is required to keep the records, but it's not her job to run around reminding us of things. So it's our responsibility. Is that what you mean? It, it, it says that I've you attended, attended it. it. Right, I, so I had to complete it because I attended. They wouldn't give me what said you attended. Yeah, yeah, they shouldn't. But in anyway. partnership with the division of open So just send me a copy of that. I'll print it out for the board. I can board also file. look this up too. Yeah. So just so Sue and Crystal and Rich. So when you send me your most recent, 
send me, after you complete something, send it to me. So I know you've done it. Okay? But you're, you yourself said that they're having trouble with their computer part of UMass. So even though it's been acknowledged and you asked us before if we finished and we said yes and, and you verified it, it might not be able to I, call, I, call it up again. I'm going to have to point problems. out to you that I never said UMass. UMass no longer delivers the training. It is a company the state contracts with called Now, Texas. now, but I'm talking about when I took it, it was still under UMass. So calling this certificates up now it might be a difficult so but we've all discussed it at previous meetings that we did complete these certain right, but, you, you, but you have to complete it again because there's no proof you, we talked about the proof you, you don't have it you proof. don't have the proof well, right we'll but it. but there's the track star was also having problems yeah. so we have to so you do still need to take that oh i know that i know i have right. that right. so track star is the meeting next I believe so. Okay, I'll that with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just 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 the other two. Just email me your certificate, which should be on your email. And if you all could do that before November 19th, that would be Bye. Okay. Any further questions, discussion, Sue, anything? I'd like to add to next month's agenda um, more about... Okay, do you have anything about the agenda item we're just trying to finish no, up? Okay, about. the next item on the agenda is items for future agenda. Sue? I'd like to know more about topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance because over the years of being to board meetings and also being a member of the board, it changes all the time. We were always told that we could bring up anything. Now you're today, you're saying it has to do with the agenda. I want to know more. And where, where is there something written that we can read about? What does it mean? It's in bring up something. It, well, in you, open meeting law. You have to read mm -hmm. open meeting law. You have to educate yourself on this. Well, I did read it, but I don't even retain that far enough. Well, then please reread it. It's right. Real, I'm sorry. That's so. It's fundamental. So I've seen it handled all different ways. You know, it's right? as a chair. And the the thing chairs. we go by now, I cannot speak to previous chairs. The thing we go by now is open meeting law. Period. Hard and fast. You may not like it, but that's what. But we're you're doing. talking about open meeting law having to do with that 48 hours of advance. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Right. That's an open meeting law. And if you take an open meeting law training, you would know this. Understood. <laughs> Crystal, do you have anything for items for future agenda? No. Okay. Just the subcommittee stuff. Yeah, and the all stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it's already written down. We'll do yeah, so no, the subcommittee. Um, I do. Uh, so we are going to put the uh, air conditioner um, installate uh, the the air conditioner policy insulation installation and the keeping them year round, right? Revising the policy. And you have to send that. You said you're going to try to get it to her before the next meeting, right? Send what to me? Remember you said you guys are going to revise how to word so that we can put this in? Yeah, yeah. that's just part of it. So you don't give it to it. You don't give that to her. The, yeah, we, we work with Pamela, the oh, policy know. subcommittee works with oh, okay. Pamela. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, I'm talking about the air conditioning. That's what you're that, talking about. That's what I'm talking okay. about. Because the, the, Code of conduct yeah, does not right. apply yes. to the panel. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to bring up another thing to discuss, and that is refrigerators. You and I talked about that. So I'm going to add that to next month's agenda. Uh, refrigerators for uh, 667s. Okay. And 705s? No. Why not? Okay. Not. We're not discussing it. We cannot. <laughs> it's open meeting law. We you cannot just, discuss you it. Just put it. Oh, you yeah. just said 607. So we'll add it. Well, it I wanted to add I'm, I'm, I'm adding it to the agenda. Yeah, this is agenda yeah. items we're not discussing who, what for. Okay? It's. You just said. You just said I am six, adding. 667 and 705. No, she just said 667. Well, that's right. For 667. 705. That's it. She didn't say 705. We're not discussing it. Want I would like to. I said, I would like to add. Okay, okay. then we'll okay. add it to 667. Oh, okay. 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 Rich, do you have anything? Excuse me. No. You, okay, great. Uh. 
I see we have no one over the age of 18 here for public comments. So, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. We're done.